Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. There are some oddities with the U.S. legal system, and one of them is how defendants get charged for things as they go through the system. So, for instance, I'm sure you know if you cannot afford an attorney, one can be appointed for you. If you get sentenced to fines and costs after being found guilty, you may be asked as part of that to pay for the attorney that was appointed for you. And, more surprisingly, I think to many people, is you may be charged room and board for the time you spent in jail. And it might even apply if you were found not guilty. Or perhaps didn't go to trial. They just release you. But they still might charge you for that. Depends on the state. But an interesting story out of Michigan Jerry sent me. And I, I got to comment this because, of course, this is Michigan where I'm licensed to practice law. But Margaret Cahill wrote this for WSYM Fox 47. Mid-Michigan County jails charge inmates daily fees to offset housing costs. And the law says they can do this, but it varies wildly from place to place as to how much they charge or if they charge at all. In jails across mid-Michigan, inmates are charged for each day of their stay after they are sentenced. Those fees can soar as high as $35 a day or as low as 8 bucks a day. Despite those disparities, sheriff's departments in the area said these fees exist to offset the cost of housing the inmates. But some criminal justice advocates would disagree, alleging that these fees are not fair. The fees come from a 1984 state law that allows county jails to charge inmates up to $60 a day for each day that you are housed there. In mid-Michigan, Clinton County charges the most at $35 a day, followed by Eaton and Jackson counties at $32 per day, and Ingham County only charges $8 a day. However, Ingham and Eaton counties only charge inmates for their jail stay after they are sentenced or convicted and do not charge for time spent in jail awaiting trial. And they could if they wanted to, I believe, and that's the problem. Many people would say, well, (laughs) if you're going to charge me to stay here against my will, you should either let me go or make it a free stay. But John Cooper, the executive director of the nonprofit Safe and Just Michigan, said that daily fees can add up over the course of an inmate's sentence and become a huge financial burden. Economic consequences that you see a lot of the time are really doing things to families and communities that I think society shouldn't want to happen, but isn't really paying attention to. So user fees are a great example of this because most people who end up in local jails are poor, and they're poorer when they get out. Local sheriff's departments said they simply want to offset the cost borne by the taxpayers. Meanwhile, the Eaton County Undersheriff said this is about fiscal responsibility. Legislatures in the counties in Michigan believe that some of the accountability for the housing costs should be borne by those who are sentenced to be in jail. That should not rest entirely with the taxpayers. And it's fiscally responsible to seek reimbursement, and that's why we do it. Now, the Jackson County Jail Administrator agrees and said he believes that this is the most fair way to split the cost. Look at the Jackson population. We have a high degree of poverty in our county. There's a lot of law-abiding citizens that are also economically disadvantaged and to pay their taxes, so this is a way out. My message would be this is a way for everybody to actually pay their fair share. Advocates, like the executive director of the Michigan chapter of Citizens United for the Rehabilitation of Errants, said this is the wrong way to think about the issue. If we as a society cannot afford to run our jails the way we're running them, then change the way we run them. Don't pass it off on somebody else. Our decision to incarcerate people, so we need to pay for it. Now, an East Lansing defense attorney has several clients who've spent time in jail and believes incarceration is overused and harmful. We've just used jail too much over the last several decades as a way to try to reform individual people who get involved in committing crimes. To me, the exact opposite of rehabilitation is putting them in a county jail. He described the law as draconian and said the issue disproportionately affects individuals who are already straddled with economic hardship. People get hit hardest with it are the poor folks. So to address the issue of inmates being unable to afford the fees, several counties allow inmates to work off their bill. Uh, So they can mop the jails, they can wash the cop cars, they can go over and shovel um, stuff at the animal control section of the building or the fairgrounds, and so on. And... uh, In Cook uh, and Eaton County, in addition to working out their debt, the jail tries to work with economically disadvantaged inmates by helping them with substance abuse problems, education, and employment, so they'll be more equipped to pay off their debts upon release. So the story goes on quite a bit and talks about how different counties handle this. But many people I've spoken to are surprised by it. 
And likewise, the bit about being charged for your court-appointed defender. And interestingly, I can tell you that at least one court I'm aware of, 36th District Court in Detroit, if you walk into any of the courtrooms and sit down and just read the stuff on the walls, many of the courtrooms have a sign that says, court-appointed attorneys cost, and it shows you how much a court-appointed attorney makes for representing you. And then below that it says, and if you are appointed a court-appointed attorney and you wind up taking a plea or being found guilty, you will be charged that. And so a lot of people, when they hear the, you know, if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you, assume that I'm going to get one appointed for me. They don't say one will be appointed for you, for which you will be billed later. That's not part of the Miranda warning. But that's how it works, and that's how it's evolved over time. And so I'm not saying that there's a right answer or a wrong answer here. I'm not saying I agree with this or I disagree with this. These are both just policy decisions that are made by the government. So in Michigan in 1984, they passed a law saying, if you spend time in jail and uh, you get convicted, you're going to have to reimburse us for the time you spent in jail up to a certain amount. And the real question I have is some places they say, even if you get found not guilty, we can charge you for your stay in jail, which I think is nonsense. Uh, it seems to me that'd be a violation of some due process rights to suggest that you were found not guilty but still have to pay for your incarceration prior to you being found not guilty. That doesn't make any sense to me. But as of right now, the point is, depending on where you get arrested, it might cost you 8 bucks a night or 32 bucks a night to spend time at the local county jail. And so there you go. But uh, like I said, it'll probably surprise some people to know this, but this is fairly common across America. And like I said, I've seen it litigated a couple times, and the issue always is, can you charge people who were found not guilty? Or worse, can you charge people who were arrested, lodged in the jail, and then released without being charged with anything? Can you charge them? Because that, to me, would also seem to be bogus, as we would say. So mid-Michigan County Jails charge inmates daily fees to offset housing costs. Margaret Cahill wrote it. Jerry sent it me. Thanks a lot. WSYM Fox 47 published it. And by the way, mid-Michigan is usually the section right about here in the lower peninsula of the state of Michigan. Questions or comments? Put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud.